All right, so my name is Wes O'Donnell. I'm a professor of predictive analytics. And uh, what I am not is a data scientist, uh, nor am I a data journalist. I guess that's a thing. Um, what I am, in fact, is a data popularizer. Uh, sort of the way my childhood hero, Carl Sagan, was a science popularizer. Um, bringing science to the masses. I want to bring data to the masses in a way that doesn't require you to have an advanced degree in quantum chromodynamics. A data for the rest of us. So, I teach predictive analytics, which sounds excruciatingly boring. <laughs> excruciatingly boring to the average college student. Um, I've gotten that look a few times. And part of my joy and part of my enthusiasm is taking my students and shattering their expectations of what data could be, of what data should be, and show them that not only is information beautiful, but that it can, in fact, save the world. So, as we get older, it's, it's easy to get lost in our own mortality. It's, in fact, it's difficult to see past our own mortality. Uh, sometimes it's easy to think that Technology will eventually come and save us from ourselves. Maybe find a renewable energy source, maybe solve climate change. So let's talk about data. Where does data come in, right? Um, a colleague of mine said, if you don't show a picture of Commander Data in your talk about data visualization, then you're a coward. <laughs> and uh, so game, set, match. Um, but just like Star Trek's utopian 24th century, data and how we interact with the data uh, is our key, and that key opens a door. And beyond that door is prosperity for our species. But we have plenty of data. Data is everywhere. Data has been around for ages. Uh, we used to write it on walls. It's, it's been around for a long time. But it's always been structured data. It's always been stored and collated neatly in databases or written on a wall somewhere. And then some clever people invented the internet. This is a diagram of ARPANET from 1969. It's essentially the first internet. It's the first network to use uh, packet switching technology. I was surprised to find out that the internet has been around in some form for almost 50 years. But the internet as we know it today uh, has caused this flood of unstructured data. That is, uh, data in the form of your kids dressed up in Halloween costumes, Facebook updates, tweets, um, emails, IMs, not to mention devices that are connected to the internet, like your smartphones, CCTV cameras, a multitude of sensors, and basically everything in Bill Gates' house. Um, so this explosion in the volume of unstructured data has made it very difficult to gain meaningful insights from the data. So what's the answer? It's a rhetorical question, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the answer is a tool. It weighs about three pounds. Each of you have one. And it has a consistency somewhere between warm butter and jello. Any guesses? Yes, too easy. Human brain, something that is exquisitely good at visual pattern recognition, uh, that takes data that you see to your brain through your retina at a rate of 10 million bits per second. That's faster than Wi-Fi. <laughs> the ability to see data in a way that's visually pleasing, to see data in a way that we can gain some aesthetic beauty gives us crucial insights that weren't immediately obvious before. That's actually really creepy. I didn't realize <laughs> how big that was going to be. The NSA has joined us <laughs> for today's talk. Um, Right, so let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this picture. Well, video. So within a fraction of a second, your brain has already made a number of assumptions based on this moving image. Uh, it's geographic location. Perhaps someplace warm or equatorial. Uh, time of day, well, at least either morning or evening. Uh, the weather looks fabulous. I'd like to be there right now. And that there's no predators present. There's no obvious sign of danger. 
uh, your, your brain is, is really exquisitely well suited to gain a large volume of information in a very short time frame. So, businesses realize this, and many forward-thinking companies are quick to adopt data visualization to communicate some of their more complex ideas. And cool websites like informationisbeautiful.net and flowingdata.com pop into existence. So I propose two ideas. Number one, information is indeed beautiful. And number two, beautiful information can and will save the world by triggering an emotional response within you, by speaking to your emotional intelligence, causing you to want to take action. All right, let me show you some examples of some of my favorite data that's so beautiful it borders on art. This is Plain Truth by David McCandless. The boxes represent every fatal commercial plane crash since 1993. The size of the box represents the casualty number and the color, the cause. So purple for human error, uh, let's see, blue for weather, orange for mechanical failure, and red for criminal or terrorism. So just a quick glance at this gives me volumes of information. A lot better than looking at it on a spreadsheet. Uh, this tells me that human error makes up for almost as much as all of the other causes combined. Uh, so perhaps this tells me that we need to be focusing more on uh, some type of extra training for the pilots or investing in some new technology uh, to assist them during multiple times of the flight. Okay, next, the global arms trade by Google Ideas. Google Ideas is a think tank that's trying to use technology to solve some of the world's most difficult problems. Now, we can look on a spreadsheet to see who is selling guns to who. But when we look at it visualized, we can see the interrelationships between countries. Many countries that claim to be ideological enemies freely trading guns to one another. This gives us a window into a very complicated geopolitical landscape. How about a map of a city that doesn't show buildings, roads, or infrastructure, but instead shows digitally marked hotspots, like bars, hotels? This is Stat Builder, and it's an attempt to digitally map the shape of cities, using mostly data from services like Yelp and Foursquare. The most impressive thing is that this designer, Marit Steffener of Stat Builder, actually sells prints of these online. So think about that for a second. We're at a time now where you can buy aggregated data and then hang it on your wall as art. Now, one of the things I love about data visualization is, the, is really the way that it sort of confirms certain suspicions or hypotheses. So let me tell you a story. Uh, when I was a young college student, maybe 20 years ago, I remember sitting around having uh, deep thoughts with friends and I remember saying to myself, I remember saying to myself, just you know, I, randomly, I bet in 10,000 years, uh, all the humans on the planet, because of globalization, are going to be roughly the same skin color. So darker than me, uh, but lighter than African American. Fast forward to today, and I stumble upon this visualization from CNN Money. Now notice time moving from left to right from the greatest generation all the way over to the millennials and Generation Z, those born after the year 2000. The colors represent different races. And what I find personally astounding is that the population for all of the races, uh, white, black, Hispanic, is all decreasing. Native Americans are staying steady, and mixed race is the only one that's increasing with time. Um, sort of, I don't know, uh, a, sort of confirming my random ramblings as a young college student. Uh, spoiler alert, though, I'm not an anthropologist, so I'm not sure if, uh, you know, the data presented is completely accurate. So that's all well and good, and that's all beautiful, but what about the save the world bit? This is a list of some of the near-Earth asteroids close to the planet. 
uh, that were they to, in fact, collide with the Earth, would be civilization-destroying events. This is boring. I'm getting boring just standing here looking at it. So this is, this is the same data visualized. Yeah, so I sat here yesterday for 30 minutes watching the little blue ball, Earth, go around the big orange ball and cringing every time there was a near miss. Um, this is Astering 3D by software engineer Ian Webster, and it really puts into perspective what type of shooting gallery the inner solar system really is. Uh, and it really helps to put it in perspective. It puts it in perspective instantly without the need to read spreadsheets. So putting such a cosmic cataclysm aside for a second, what about something much more present? What about something that we can actually fix? Save the planet. Climate change is a very controversial issue, which is insane to me. Why is it controversial? How did it get politicized? Mainstream scientists uh, all over the globe are pretty consistent that it, at least some of the gradual warming is due to human activity. Um, but politics aside, let's get one thing out of the way right now. I get uncomfortable when people say, save the planet. Uh, the planet's going to be just fine, I assure you. There's nothing we can do. It's only the human ego that thinks that we could somehow damage the planet. Uh, there's nothing that we could do that would possibly uh, cause any harm. Even geologists will tell you that uh, Earth has seen such routine interplanetary violence in its past, uh, of such nightmarish destruction, that even humans with our soaring imaginations couldn't possibly conceive it. So I think what we should be saying, actually, is save the humans, because we're the ones really at risk here. We're the ones really in danger. So how do we visualize the current climate change data? Well, we use charts and graphs and spreadsheets and all boring stuff like that. But David McCandless gives us this amazing visualization, which shows the different cities and the time in the future in which they're going to be completely submerged. And this is a great visualization. I'm not taking anything away from David McCandless at informationisbeautiful.net, but I think the best visualizations hit you emotionally. Why? Because negative emotions are a sign that change is needed, are a sign that, that you can do something. So here is a visualization of this visualization. So I'm, I'm going to go inception on you guys. We're going to go deep on this one. <laughs> All right. This is home. This is us. This is where some of us live. This isn't a thousand years from now. If you're younger, this is the world of your great-grandchildren. And this image right here in particular, given to us by worldunderwater.org, powered by Carbon Story, takes Google Street View and superimposes our climate data from earlier. But this isn't a talk about climate change. So I want you to stop, and I want you to feel what you're feeling right now at this minute. And if you have even a little anxiety about the fate of our children's futures, then you've just validated that visualization speaks to us on a deeper level, on an emotional level, one that entices us to make change happen. When we visualize data, we make it real. We pull it out of the abstract and into our hearts. And our hearts give us the reason we do what we do. Our hearts give us the why. And the why is so important. Why do you do what you do? You need to be asking yourself every day. That's so important. Data visualization gives us that why. So science and art have finally come together. It took long enough, 2015, to give us something beautiful, and give us a little bit of wonder, make our lives easier, and just maybe cause you guys to want to save the world. Thanks. <laughs>